vector, vector movements. Quadrilateral ABCD has vertices A, 2, 1, 3, B equal to 6, 5, 3, C equal to 6, 1, and negative 1, and D with coordinate 2, negative 3, and negative 1. The question asks to find AB. In order to find vector AB, you simply subtract B with A, B being 6, 5, 3, and A being 2, 1, 3. Subtracting these two coordinates, we get the final value of a, vector AB to be 4, 4, and 0. Since we found the value for line AB, the next question asks that is line AB parallel to line L1, where L1, where the equation for L1 is 6, 1, negative 1, and the direction vector for L1 is 1, 1, and 0. We will be focusing on the direction vector of L1. To see if both of these vectors are parallel, they must share the same direction, meaning that they must have the same value for the coordinates x, y, and z. Since AB has 4, 4, 0, and the direction vector has 1, 1, 0, we can factor out 4 from vector AB to get the final answer of 1, 1, 0 for vector AB. As you can see, the vector A, vector AB, after being simplified or factored, shares the same direction with the direction vector of line L1, stating that these two vectors are parallel. The following question asks us to find what R dot S will be. Well, we know we have to use the scalar dot product or the scalar product or the dot product formula to find what R times S is. Well, we know that the scalar dot, the scalar product formula is cosine theta equals to R times S divided by the absolute value of R times the um, dot the absolute value of S. So let's we have given we were given the form the values for the absolute value of r and the absolute value of s where the absolute value of r equals to 4 and the absolute value of s equals to square root 3 next what we have to do is just plug in the values and we have the angle given which equals to 30 so all we have to do is substitute the right hand side the right hand side just to make sure it's just r and s so to do that, all we have to do is multiply the absolute value of R and the absolute value of S in order to get it to the left-hand side of the equation. R times S equals to 4 times square root 3 cosine 30, which equals to 6. The following question asks us to prove that the angle ABC equals to inverse cosine negative 5 over 7. In order to do this, we have to draw the two lines out and place the values of A, B, and C. We can see that in order to get the angle between these two lines, we have to do the scalar dot the scalar product formula. In order to do this, we can find line A, we can find line B to A and B to C. In order to find b to a, we just subtract coordinates a sub with the coordinates of b, where the coordinates of a are 3, negative 2, and 4, and b is 5, 4, and 0. Subtracting these two values, we would get negative 2, negative 6, negative 4. We do the same thing to get vector b to c, where c is 11, 6, negative 4, and b is 5, 4, and 0. Subtracting these two values, we get 6, 2, and negative 4. Now looking at these two vectors, we can see that their, their coordinates are very similar. They're actually, they're the same, but in different locations in terms of x, y, and z. This can, we can see that if we try to get the absolute value, we would get the same value. So we can say that the absolute value of b to a will equal to the absolute value of b to c. Now, in order to get 
it, in order to prove that theta equals to inverse cosine negative 5 over 7, we need to rearrange the formula where theta equals to cosine a inverse cosine b to a times b to c divided by the absolute value of b to a times the absolute value of b to c. Doing this, we have, in order to do this, we have to find out what the vector b to a dot vector b to c equals to, where b to a equals to negative 6, negative 2, negative 6, 4, dot 6, 2, and negative 4. Multiplying these two vectors, we get a scalar value of negative 40. So now we have found out what b to a dot b to c is. Now time to find the absolute value of b, the vector b to a. We get square root 56. Now, as mentioned earlier, we know that the absolute value of b to a will be the same as the absolute value of b to c. So all we can do now is plug in the values that we have found out into the, the equate the scalar product formula. We get that cosine theta equals to negative 40 divided by square root of 56 times square root of 56, which equals to negative 40 divided by 56 as two square roots multiplied each other, we get the value inside the root. So now we have negative 40 over 56. Simplify this, we get negative 5 over 7. And bringing the cosine over to the right hand sign, right hand sign, making the theta by itself, we get cos inverse cosine negative 5 over 7. question ask us to find vector OP in terms of A and B from the following triangle. So they have also given us a ratio which is a, a, AP to AB is equal to 2 is to 1. So one of the ways we can find o so from so to get from A to B we can go in the direction of A to O and then O to B. So we will get a to O plus O to B. So we can see from the diagram that A to O is negative A because it goes because it goes in the opposite direction of the initial direction of a vector A. And to get to O to B will be in terms of vector B as shown above in the diagram. So then we'll get that A to B equals to B minus A. Now once we're figured out what a to b is, you can find out what o to p is. To get from o to p, we can go in terms of o to a and then a to p. But we have to find out what a to p is. So we already know that o to a is in terms of vector a. But to get to a to p, we can use the ratios, which is a to a is to p, a to p is to a, a to b is 2 is to 1. So we can say that O to P equals to A plus 2 thirds of A to B. So we have already found out what A to B is, which is B minus A. Plugging the value for B minus A into A to B in, in order to find O to P, we get that A plus 2 thirds bracket B minus A which equals to a plus two thirds b minus two thirds a, which will finally give us one thirds a plus two thirds b, which also equals to one third bracket a plus two b. This is the direction in order to get from o to p. The following question asks us to find Rosa's resultant velocity as she's paddling through a She's paddling through water with speed of 1.25 meters per second and the current speed of the water being 0 0.50 meters per second. We can solve this problem by first drawing an arrow that represents Rosa's velocity, that being 1.25 meters per second. We can draw an arrow representing the current's direction, which will be 0 0.50 meters per second. 
In order to get the resultant velocity, we just have to subtract Rosa's velocity with the current velocity, which will give us 1.25 subtracted with 0 0.50, which is equal to 0 0.75 meters per second. So the resultant velocity of Rosa paddling through the water will be 0 0.75 meters per second.